great spot. This is a little bit far from my house, but I happen to be traveling right now. So I'm at Babbler State Park. I can't do like a, park, a national parks on the air because this is a state park. But anyway, this spot is wonderful. Beautiful day. It's a, not quite spring yet. It is early March. Um, leave, no leaves, you know, it's kind of chilly, a little bit chilly. But look at this tree. Tons of branches to and a chair right here. And there's no bugs. It's great. That's my little, uh, that's kind of a new car. It's a used car. I just make a, I made a video on how I got that little car. Toyota Echo 2002. It's kind of my beater now. Um, go to my other channel. Anything, three, anything with wheels 360, 360 at the end of it. And that's my other channel if you want to know more. Um, I put all the stuff that does, isn't ham radio on that channel. So let's get set up. Got my radio. I haven't touched this stuff in a while. It's been so cold, you know. Um, I got my antenna in here. The thing to do is you, you do the antenna first when you're doing this because if you have any problems and you run out of time or something, you haven't set up your radio and everything, and then you have to tear all that all down. Wait till you successfully get your antenna up before you unpack everything. That's my little tip to you. Because I got this up in the first throw. First throw is a hard thing to do to get it where you want. Gotta get lucky a little bit. I forgot my bungee cord. Normally I would take that and add as a tension relief, but I forgot it. Can't find it. So I actually have it hanging here straight to the radio. There's no tension relief. I just gotta hope nothing jerks that. That, that would be bad. The um, antenna goes up there. And then my twine or wire. Somebody asked me where I got this. I got this at Hamvention. 150 feet for five bucks out in that used area. You know, it wasn't in the new new area. It was outside where all the used stuff is, you know, and the bargain stuff. And so I didn't have any counterweight over here heavy enough, so I grabbed this stick and just pulled it, and then that adds tension over here. And now I've got my antenna, my antenna set up, and let's just make a quick contact. I am traveling today. I'm supposed to be traveling, so I don't have a whole lot of time. I got a five hour drive. And that's how much sunlight I have left. I got my, I got my Pico paddle here. The tiny little paddle, which is really nice. Um, it's better than the, I had trouble with the paddle that comes with this. The yellow crap. You have to be careful because this is not a regular audio jack size that goes to the Pico paddle. This is a smaller size. And at one time I forgot to bring this. And this did not fit. Because this is, a, this is an audio cable. This is smaller. So, you're kind of dependent on this little wire here. Otherwise, your day is ruined if you don't bring it. All right, I've got my ham log. Um, pretty, pretty convenient. I don't have a notepad. I do have a notepad. Sometimes it's good to write. But now, as I mentioned, out here, I'm on a high hill out in the woods, really far away from the city. St. Louis is like 40, 45 miles east of here. Uh, that would be west because the sun's setting. Um, but the noise out here is wonderful because there, because there isn't any. Now there is a, it is a Saturday, so I would expect to hear some activity. Let's take a look. I haven't done this in a while. Let's see. Solar information. Poor, poor, poor. Fair. 80 to 40 meters fair. Night, good, poor, 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 great. Well, there is some sign of activity, at, at least. I don't hear any CW yet. 14.05. Man, this is wonderful. There's something. I'm going to call CQ. 14.068.
So I just got a call interrupted, as you may have heard, and my grandmother might be having a stroke. We're not sure if she's like real confused or something. So the trip that I was about to take five hours from here, I'm not going to take it now. So I'm still going to make the video because there's not much I can do. But my mom's taking care of my her my grandmother, and people are watching me uh, take this video, and I feel weird. See, he's staring at me, so I point the camera right back at him. <laughs> anyway, uh, my grandmother's con just confused. We don't know what it is. It's just she's confused. That's all we know. So it's not super serious. Uh, and there's nothing I can do because I'm five hours away. She's in Oklahoma and I'm on the other side of Missouri. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this video and go home instead of instead of going to Oklahoma. Alright. Weird. He is writing to me, <coughs> 66 years old, KG7VTO. Anyway, that was a real nice QSO, uh, super booming sound out of Oregon. Uh, all I really wanted was one QSO, and man, it is so quiet up here, I can hear so well. Uh, I really feel bad not answering that, but I, I kind of need to take a break. I also like to log everything before I move on, so I, you know, I can't really handle a pileup, <laughs> even if it's a pileup of just one. Someone, uh, there must be a trails down there or something. Someone just pulled up. Anyway, this is a great setup. I'm gonna relax and and call CQ again here in a minute after I take a little break. I know I've said this before, but this radio at 10 watts. Um, I don't have a lot of time to mess with 5 watts and 1 watt. I probably could, but I, don't, I just don't see the point. Why not use 10 watts? You know, be clear, be very clear. Why, why be partially clear? Um, I'm not saying I wouldn't ever bring a, a smaller radio. I still, I like the idea of that mountain topper radio. Um, it's very small. It's a little cryptic to use, though. I don't like too much cryptic. Um, this radio, though, with a wire and a tree, it's just so easy to make a contact, if you know Morse. I have never really made a lot of contacts using voice on this. I don't know why. I just got in the habit of doing Morse, and um, I'm still not the best at it because I just don't do it often enough. You know, if I take three months off, I get really rusty. And I kind of panic and freeze. I'm like, oh, crud, what was I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Uh, i got to think of things to say. I, I forgot my script, you know. And that's just the way my mind works. I, 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 I do really well when I do it often, but then I quickly drop off when I don't. <sighs> That's why I kind of like contests. You just, short and fast, just make the contact. You know, I don't have a lot to say. It's interesting, but I just don't have a lot to say. Uh, so I decided to go from 14.068 down to 10 point and it tunes right up perfectly. When I got, I have this kind of heavy duty wire from MPD Digital, I guess, Digita. 
Um, it's only six feet, I think. Then mine, and I have no, I, I don't have any support for that. It's just hanging. It's working really well. You see the airplane? It's a beautiful day. Not, no way there's mosquitoes in the spring this early. Beautiful. A little tiny bit chilly, but I like that. All right. Let's, so I'm all tuned up. Let's hit it. 10 watts, low SWR. Message one, I have my CQ set in there. I have, um, I've been practicing my words per minute at 26, 25, uh, listening, but I, I dial it down to 15, 16, so I can make sure I get everything. It's a little bit slow even for me, but I don't want to miss anything, so I'm doing my best. Oh, 40 meters, 7.039, tunes right up. Everything tunes right up. This thing is amazing. Call CQ. I got a 5, I'm in Missouri, and that last QSO, I got a 569 out of Oregon. Okay, I made another contact. That's good. Uh, so that was 40 meters, 7.039, uh, very weak, a lot of QSB towards the end, and it just, the, the signal went, whoa, way down. He said QSB, so I said 7.3s. That was W2BPI in New York. So basically, I'm in the middle of the country. If this is United States, New York, maybe that's New York State, that's Florida, that's California. I'm in the middle. I talked to Oregon, and I talked to New York. So basically that's the one skip. In the middle I can talk to the edges, California's and the Florida's and the New York's often. That's and the Canada's, you know, and the South America's. I, I don't get South America. Um anyway, two contacts, uh New York, Oregon. I, I feel good about that. Um, you know, I just like to make a contact. Uh it just feels good. I don't feel the need to make a lot of contacts, but alright, let's put it in the log book. So I go over here to ham log. I already set the time. Uh, I forgot to set the time off, but the frequency 7.039 call sign W2 BPI. I got a. I sent a 569 and I got a 569. 569 name is. Well, I could look it up, but his name is George. If you hit look up, it will go on the internet and grab grab their name. Isn't that cool? Hamlog. Now, if you have your GPS on, you can get your grid information, too, and it will put it in there. Isn't that cool? 10 watts. Notes. Uh, it was just a short cue, so George. I got his name, RST, and location. So I'm all good. Hit save, and you're done. Later on, I'll upload that to my... There's a pickup. Later on, I'll upload that to my logs, but I feel good about this. Thanks for joining me. I started carrying a compass is pretty nice actually so what I wanted to do was say this antenna was uh, slightly angled that way and that way would have been 
almost due south, a little bit southwestish. So you see southwest. And so if I'm pointing to the southwest and I'm hitting the I hit the northeast and the northwest, isn't that strange? I'm pointing that way, kind of. But I seem to be radiating, well, I mean, you could say I'm radiating, but I was able to make context to the northwest and the northeast. I bet you, I mean, I'm almost vertical here, almost vertical. Anyway, that's interesting, and you notice that's west, right there, of course, in the sun. If we point this, you can see that right now the west, it's a little south, the sun is a little in the southwest. Um, it is March, so it is uh, it is marching northerly to us, or we are tilting towards it, I should say. All right. It's pretty cool to bring a compass, though. I would I would recommend that. Kind of gives you an idea where you're, you know, because you don't really know. I know that's west, but you know the sun moves so all, so much that you don't quite know for sure. I get a lot of comments on this throw line bag. Um, I got you go to eBay or I think even Amazon right now. All you do is you type in tree line throw bag and or box and you will see these out there. They're about $26 for the box. I screwed mine up. I poked a hole in it. Um, they're a little bit tricky to figure out. Let me show you my little pattern here. If I remember it, we'll see if I can get it right. So you take you take it and you twist it down, then you take these two ends that way, and then you do it this way, and then you do it that way. These two pieces here, the little strap, the strap inside, and everything works right. Um, that may have, I may have made that look easy, but it actually took me a long time to figure that out. Okay. 